of a nerve impulse. So I see that the um, printout doesn't look very good. Uh, this is actually supposed to be a neuron. Let me show you guys what it originally looked like. Like this. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It Printers. Look like no, that. not at all. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fill it in and pretend like this neuron was perfect and beautiful anyways. So I'm just using my black pen or pencil here, and I'm just drawing some extra dendrites. Just go crazy there. Whatever. Not a big deal. And then there's that little tapering off of the cell body called the axon hillock. And then uh, the axon hillock, you're going to have um, the myelin sheath wrapped around the axon. And there are these little gaps between each um, myelin, myelin sheath. Mm-hmm. So there's axon inside of the myelin there. <clears throat> this is what it originally was supposed to look like. So if that helps. Okay. Um, so notice we've zoomed in on the neuron over here. Um, on the right side we have a little graph we'll talk about. Remember I said you're full of electricity, which means you can measure the amount of electricity you have in your body, and that's what this graph is doing, measuring how much electricity is happening um, on the inside of the cell. So what we're going to do on the left-hand side is we're actually going to zoom in on this section of the axon. So then when you zoom in, here's the axon across the middle. You have myelin sheets wrapped around. And then you have these little gaps where you don't have any myelin. With your partner or somebody sitting near you, can you figure out what do we call these little gaps where you don't have any myelin covering the axon? Um, can you... Uh, Attempt to pronounce what do we call those little gaps where we don't have myelin sheets, Ariana? Good enough. Nodes. We're going to call them <laughs> nodes. Um, how many nodes do we have in this picture? Two. Two right here. So we're going to label one as node number one. The one that's closer to the cell body is node number one. The node that's a little bit farther away from the cell body is going to be node number two. Um, so in order for a nerve impulse to travel through the entire neuron, it will actually go in a domino effect. So node 1 will do a series of steps here, and then node 2 will do those steps, and then node 3 will do those steps. So if you remember the video, it shows like a flash of light all the way across the whole neuron. That's because something's happening at node 1, and then something happens at node 2, and node 3, and then node 4. So it looks like the light's traveling through the neuron. Um, so what we're going to do is notice... For the node here, there is a cell membrane wall here. There's another cell membrane right here. We're going to zoom in on the cell membrane right there. So the way we're going to zoom in is we're going to draw those, you know, those lines that mean we zoomed in on it. And the zoomed in version looks like that. So this is the wall, or this, sorry, this is the cell membrane layer right here. It has some doors, some windows that allow things in or out. So I'm just going to label this as cell membrane. Of a neuron. They contain channels. Or pumps. That allow ions in to move in or out. Do you guys remember what channels are from like geography? Like channels or straits or 
that kind of stuff. Remember, like countries fight over channels. Yeah, it's a body of water, like a passageway between land that allows ships to move through quickly. Yeah, so a channel in this case allows ions to move through quickly. The Haversian canals? Mm -hmm. Yep, that allowed for the blood vessels to pass through. So, um, so we zoomed in on the cell membrane, and here in the cell membrane, you have three different doors, door one, door two, and door three, that allows different things in or out, okay? So we're gonna designate each doorway with a different color. So I'm gonna use red for the very first opening here. This is called the sodium channel. So with red, I'm gonna draw the sodium channel in, or fill, not fill it in, but outline it. Notice it has a little gap in it, so things could flow in or out but it's closed right now, so nothing's going in or out. If the sodium channel were open though, you could allow sodium into the cell, so I'm just gonna circle a few of those ions here. Quick, chemistry masters, if sodium ions are ions, uh, what kind of ions are they? Cations or anions? Cations. Good, cations, which means positive or negative? Positive. 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 So I'm going to add a little plus in all of them. Why is it positive? Because it has to have positive. Cations are positive because anions are negative? It's just the opposite. Did you gain or lose an electron? You lost an electron. You lost an electron. That's why it's more positive, right? So on the side, I'm going to write the little plus circles are supposed to be sodium ions. Um, right next to that sodium channel, you have a second channel. So I'm going to use blue to outline this channel here. This is a potassium channel. We have a, if the potassium channel were open, generally it allows potassium in or out of the cell. Right now we have a few potassium ions hanging out, out inside of the cell. Quick, potassium, anion or cation? Nice, cation as well. Your poster makes a lot more sense now. From homecoming? <laughs> so these are your potassium. What's the symbol for potassium? Okay. And then we have one last doorway here. This is called a sodium potassium pump. So I'm actually going to use green for this last one. Sodium potassium pumps are a little unique in that they require ATP. So they require energy. So this little blob right here is supposed to be ATP. So I'm just going to do a little blob. If the sodium potassium pump has ATP, then the sodium potassium pump can move sodium um, out of the cell and potassium into the cell, but it does require energy. I think I read, I don't know how true this is, but I think I read somewhere that at least a third of the ATP your body makes is to power these sodium potassium pumps. When you're resting, a third of your energy is spent on these pumps here. So there's a lot of them, they all require ATP. So since ATP is here, sodium potassium pump is going to move sodium out and potassium in. So I'm going to use red to show the sodium getting pushed out of the cell. And I'm going to use blue to show that potassium is getting pulled into the cell. They're arrows, yeah. Um, I forgot to add green is sodium potassium pump. All right, so in this picture, uh, down here, the bottom half of this box right here is supposed to be the inside of the neuron. The top half right here is supposed to be the outside of the neuron over here. So this is outside, this is the inside. Which side has more positives? Outside or inside? Outside, so we're gonna say the outside is more positive. And if outside is more positive, that means inside is more negative. So 
So to the right, I'm going to use my black pen or pencil to redo this number one here. This phase that the neuron is currently in is called the resting potential. So for example, if you were sleeping and your neurons were not sending any impulses to any of your muscles, then they are currently in the resting potential phase. Um, during the resting potential phase, neurons are usually more negative on the inside. So neurons are usually more negative when they're at rest. If we take a look up at the graph, I know the labels are kind of really hard to read, so you might have to relabel it. But the x-axis originally said time. And the unit of measurement was milliseconds, so M-S-E-C. The y-axis was originally measuring how much electricity is flowing inside of the neuron. So I'm just going to cross, rewrite that. This was measuring the membrane potential. So the cell membrane has a potential or has the like capability of changing its electrical charge. Do you guys know what um, electricity, the unit of measurement for it, like for batteries and stuff? Volts. Volts. So we're measuring neurons in volts, but the problem is the voltage is really, really tiny. So it's also millivolts. So if we take a look at the graph, um, technically when a neuron is resting, its membrane potential is actually at negative 70 millivolts. So this is the number one right here. So you might have to redo that number one there. So at stage one, you have negative 70 millivolts. So cell is resting, cell is resting. I'm gonna add that. that. You have negative 70 millivolts. All right, so your cell is resting, but we need some sort of stimulus. For example, you hear something, there's a sound, or for example, um, a spider lands on your hand, or you get a paper cut, or someone stabs you, or somebody taps your shoulder, all of these are stimuli, or it's cold all of a sudden. So if that stimulus is strong enough, then it's gonna cause phase number two. So in phase number two, what's gonna happen is, notice the sodium starts flowing into the cell. So I'm gonna use my red to outline the sodium channels. And the sodium channels are open when a stimulus occurs. So I'm just gonna show sodium will flow into the cell. Notice you have your sodium potassium pump, it's shut, nothing goes in or out. The potassium channel is shut, nothing goes in or out, only the sodium is allowing sodium ions into the cell. But you also have the potassium that was originally there. So now the potassium plus the sodium, which means which side is more positive now? Inside. Now the inside becomes more positive, and therefore the outside is more negative. So that was step number two, depolarization. So depolarization is caused by a stimulus. That could be a sound, a, temper cha a temperature change, a pressure change. The stimulus will cause sodium channels to open. If sodium channels open, this causes sodium ions to rush into the neuron.